Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about complex trigonometric functions. So this stuff is going to look a lot very familiar to things you've seen in uh, normal real variable calculus. Uh, but we're just going to review uh, some of the things that are going on here. So uh, recall, of course, that uh, we know that um, if I want to write sine of x, I can rewrite it as e to the i x plus, oh, sorry, minus e to the negative i x all over 2i. Well now of course we can do the same thing uh, and now expand our, our definition to include complex variables. So we can have sine now of z is equal to e to the i z minus e to the i z uh, minus i to the i z all over 2i. And of course cosine of z, a complex variable, is very similar e to the iz plus e to the negative iz all over 2. Okay, so uh, these are uh, very standard and of course uh, a lot of the same things apply for functions of a complex variable. These are, uh, okay, because we know that e to the iz is analytic uh, because, it's, uh, because it's a function, the exponential function times uh, uh, a function just multiplied by a constant, so that's analytic, and therefore the trigs are the trigonometrics are, of course, just compositions of those same functions. Uh, for those analytic functions, there, so uh, we know they're and we find you can find their derivatives fairly straight fairly straightforwardly. So d d z is of course cosine z and d d z of cosine z is equal to negative sine z. And this works for the complex uh, of the complex variable. So these functions are analytic. Entire. It means these derivatives exist everywhere on the entire complex plane. All right, so uh, a few other uh, important identities that, uh, that are neat. So we know that uh, sine is periodic. So we know that x plus 2 pi is equal to sine of x. Right, same thing with cosine. Uh, it turns out this is also true for a complex variable. All right, um, and a few other things are also true. We know that uh, sine of um, z plus pi over 2 is equal to cosine z. And all your standard uh, uh, trigonometric identities are also true. There is an oddness to sine, even in the complex plane and an evenness to cosine. All right. Um, and your, your standard double angle identity also holds. Oh, okay. And, uh, um, and numerous other ones. Of course, the most Im important one maybe is the Pythagorean. sine squared of z uh, oop, plus cosine squared of z is equal to 1. Okay. Um, and many other uh, trigonometric identities are all the same. The angle sum and angle difference formulas for both sine and cosine are also just the same for complex variables. Uh, but I won't write those down, but they're uh, very standard. Okay, so also there's all the trigonometrics that are made by composing uh, ratios and products of other uh, trigonometrics. So, for instance, tangent of z is equal to sine z over cosine z. And, okay, we, we require then that, uh, that cosine of z is not equal to zero. 
So those are points of non-analyticity where, where tangent doesn't have a derivative, but otherwise we can define the derivative um, just as we would normally do. So of course we know that secant of z is equal to 1 over cosine of z. Uh, and now, so if I want to take the derivative of tangent, it's going to be equal to uh, cosine z squared um, plus, uh, oops, sorry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back this up here and be a little bit more systematic. So I'm going to take the derivative of sine, that's cosine, and multiply it by uh, the denominator. We're going to use the quotient rule minus the sine of z multiplied by uh, the derivative of cosine, which is, uh, oops, sorry, negative sine as follows, and then all over the denominator squared, cosine squared c. Of course, that right here is cosine squared, and that is sine squared z. And we have a minus and a minus that makes a plus. Of course, that's equal then to 1 over cosine squared z, which is the same thing as secant squared, just as we, we know and we're familiar with uh, from uh, from regular normal real variable calculus, so again, there's not a single case here where um, where we can find something that really departs from standard real variable calculus. Uh, what we know is that these trigonometrics they're analytic on their on their on their domain. For instance, we can't have cosine um, z equal to zero. Uh, uh, so other, from, other than those particular points, uh, uh, tangent is analytic, sine, cosine, secant, cosecant, cotangent, all, all of the above are all, um, uh, are all uh, analytic. And uh, your standard formulas all hold. Uh, another important thing, another definition we want to cover real quick is also the hyperbolics. Okay, we know that cinch of z, we can write that this is e to the z minus e to the negative z all over 2. And cosh of z is equal to e to the z plus e to the negative z all over 2 as well. And we have the standard identity d um, cinch dz is equal to cosh z, and likewise um, cosh z, I'll just write it prime, that version of the derivative, that symbol for the derivative is actually just cinch. Okay, so those standard formulas, these are also analytic, as you would guess, uh, because they are just a linear combination of analytic functions as well. Um, so again, uh, this this video isn't uh, incredibly deep. This is just listing a set of facts that are important to know and, and, and reassure that, uh, um, that all of our trigs behave exactly the same in the complex plane. So hopefully that just uh, uh, establishes these facts. All right. Thank you very much.